We're building these systems that are going to electrify everything that flies. It is the first time most people in the world will have ever even heard of electrified aircraft, let alone seen one or flown in one. Aviation, about 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions, about a billion tons of CO2 injected directly into our atmosphere every year. Aviation is a really hard industry to mitigate the emissions from. There's this range anxiety. Am I going to be able to get to where I want to go? If you run out of battery energy while flying, that's a really bad day. Sustainable aviation is the single greatest opportunity that has entered this industry since the jet age 70 years ago. Ampere, founded in 2016, on this vision for the future of aviation. I remember when my co-founder, Corey, came to me and he pitched me this wild idea that he had been working on for years, which was around bringing electric vehicle technologies into aircraft and enabling the type of performance that no one had ever been able to achieve in these planes. We moved down to Temecula, California. That just so happened to be where my co-founders grew up, where we had a free garage that we were able to build our first prototypes. We were called crazy a few times. Sustainable aviation, new technology that aviation had never seen. I mean, it really, it really challenges whether you have the conviction to see it through. And, uh, and, and certainly those early days are, are the days that it solidified. And while we realized just how much the world needed what we were doing and, and really built out that roadmap for how to get there. Aviation is a really hard industry to mitigate the emissions from. When you think about the early days of electric cars on the ground, there were some challenges that people would run into. And there are still challenges that people run into today with electric vehicles. When you think about going on a road trip and you're taking an electric car, do I have enough rain? There's this range anxiety. Am I gonna be able to get to where I wanna go? Even if I get there, am I gonna have a place to plug in? There are all these unknowns around new technology. Now, when you take that and you, and you actually look to aviation, these are even more exacerbated. So if you run out of battery energy while flying, that's a really bad day. The, the weight of batteries and the impact that that has on, on both the, the range and amount of payload capacity that the plane has, these are all big challenges that electrification poses. But they're also right at the core of the strategic decisions that we made in order to, to, to build a meaningful and pragmatic product that actually mitigates most of these biggest challenges. So for example, in the 1990s, if you were looking to, to get an electric car, it would probably be a hybrid. I'm a Prius, I'm a Prius. I'm a Prius, I'm a Prius, I'm a Prius. In fact, for the first 20 plus years of ground transportation, hybrid electric outsold fully electric or plug-in electric. Now, why is that? Well, because with a hybrid, you get all the range that you need. You don't necessarily have to have charging infrastructure at the other side. And that unlocks the opportunity to use these in a really broad way without the major risks. So we're taking those same types of risk mitigation strategies, hybrid electric propulsion for aviation, and that gets us all the range that we need that mitigates the battery weight. You're able to have relatively small battery packs, and it gets us a huge portion of the benefit with that over 50% fuel savings. In late 2023, in December, we took one of our planes out there, and people always ask, oh, Kevin, but really how far can these planes fly? Like 100 miles? We flew one of our planes for 12 hours straight and went 14 100 miles on a single hop, and we still had about two hours of reserve uh, energy left over. So I mean, this is the opportunity, is not just to have okay range, but actually to that is better endurance and range than the original airplane had that was just pure combustion. So to deliver that climate agreement that we've made while still maintaining that growth, 
and maintaining the economy, we must achieve a 30% improvement in, in the fuel efficiency. Fuel efficiency from hybrid electric systems gives phenomenal performance. We think that that's really key for the initial customers. And just like when you buy an electric car nowadays, you're not giving uh, or accepting some apologetic poor performance. You're looking for something phenomenal. And that's the opportunity that electric has here and the opportunity that's really opened up through this hybrid electric approach. So when we think about our customer base, it also evolves over time. So the very first adopters are gonna be small airline cargo and passenger operators up in Alaska, island hopping in Hawaii, or those feeder fleets for groups like UPS and FedEx. Now many of these, uh, the operators themselves aren't the name brand, but by building up those systems, those early deployments of these smaller planes, we're also laying a foundation that grows into the larger planes too. So we've got a, uh, a partnership with this company that builds planes that are in the kind of 50 seat class. Now 50 seats now might seem small compared to your, uh, to your Boeing type aircraft, but that is phenomenal when it comes to regional operations, connecting communities, increasing service. And so these will be the first places that we adopt and where we scale to. Now, the big planes, that's an exciting opportunity that we're actually working as part of our R&D, Research and Development Roadmap. So we've partnered with NASA on one of their programs to build out hybrid electric distributed propulsion architectures that could potentially scale all the way to the single aisle transport class planes, think 737s. Those architectures may look very different than how they fly today. And though it will take quite a while before we actually deploy commercially in that scale, at this stage, it's part of our research and development programs to evaluate what kind of technology gaps remain between here, where we are already flying, and there, where the, uh, the North Star vision for an industry may become. Aviation not only is pretty, pretty bad for the environment right now, but it's also pretty expensive a premium product. When I think about the future of aviation, it is not, it does not have to be a premium product. Aviation can be accessible to everyone. It can be affordable because of reduced costs of operation, whether you're hybrid electric or eventually fully electric, you can now have ticket prices, which are on par with driving. Now that's when you get this major unlock and everybody can fly. Sustainable aviation is the single greatest opportunity that has entered this industry since the jet age 70 years ago.